Australia loves its four-wheel drives, utes and SUVs, but we also love our short statured cars just like this, the Kia Picanto. This one here is the GT line, so it's a little bit more special than the base, and I bet you've seen a few of these now driving around. My name's Cameron, this is a productreview.com.au in-depth look, and today we're checking out the 2021 Kia Picanto GT line. Hey you, I noticed you're not subscribed, but if you are, thank you so much. But if you're not, make sure you hit subscribe because you're missing out on a ton of upcoming reviews that are coming from us here at Product Review Cars. We're just getting started, so make sure you don't miss out. Hit that big red button and the notification bell so you don't miss an upload from your favorite Aussie car reviewer. So this is the Kia Picanto GT line, which means you get a GT body kit. Part of that, some red accents here on the front, some silver highlighting that also runs through the front headlamps here, which is kind of cool. You get quad LED daytime running lights, but you do get halogen headlamps. You also do get LED turn indicators, which look kind of neat. And then you've also got some fog lamps down the bottom. Moving around to the side of the bumper, and you've also got some real air vents. Nice touch Kia, because a lot of people aren't doing that on their cars. And also, you've got a sensor here for autonomous emergency braking. Now, this car is cute in its dimensions. It's only about 1.6 meters in absolute width and about 3.5 meters in length, which is minuscule for cars out on sale today. So moving along the side here, we have 16 inch alloy wheels on all four wheels, which is nice. And we've also got four disc brakes on all four wheels, which is a point to make with the disc brakes because some cars have rear drums, this doesn't. So nice Kia, we like that. Moving along the side, you have this sporty side skirt with some red accenting to remind you that it is sporty. And look, you also get some chrome on the door handles. So moving around the back of the Kia Picanto, this is where the GT Line body kit continues. You've got the GT Line badge and you've also got a seven year warranty sticker because Kia likes to advertise that they do deliver a seven year warranty. You've also got a reversing camera, you've got rear parking sensors, some more red accents, some fake vents out the back, come on Kia, and even more of a worse crime, fake exhaust. But Take away the fact that they're fake, it actually is a good looking back end for a small car like this. And add the fact that you've got parking sensors and cameras, makes it really easy to make the most of the small, short wheelbase of the Picanto. So hopping to the back of the Kia Picanto, we're gonna check out its boot. Now watch out for this boot lid, it can smack you in the face if you're unsuspecting. Ask me how I know. Jumping in here, you have 255 liters of boot space, which is pretty generous for a car like this. And even better when you take out the rear parcel shelf just like that and you've got a pretty usable space for a couple backpacks back here now under the boot floor you have a spare tire changing kit and a spare tire which is nice to see because some cars like my personal car the Arbar 500 does not have a spare tire so nice to see on a car like this gives you a bit more confidence going out into the great outdoors now you do have seats that fold down in a 60 40 split you have your tether points on the back for child seats and if you fold down the 40 part, you still can fit two adults back here. Yes, they'll be snug, but it means that you can carry four adults with this seat folded down. Now, if we fold all these seats down, we'll get 1,010 liters of cargo space, which is very generous, helped with this boxy design. And yes, there are some drops here, which might make pushing items in and out just a little bit harder. But if I can take an Arbath 500 to Ikea, you can absolutely take the Kia Picanto there as well. Right, so inside the Kia Picanto GT line. This is somewhere where Kia really could have cheapened out on and made you feel a bit bad for spending 21 grand on a car, but you did because you had to, but they didn't. Instead, this is a really nice space to be. Yes, you can see where the cheaper price does come in with the scratchy plastics on the dash, a bit on the door, and the sound that the sun visor makes when it hits the roof. But other than that, it's pretty nice in here. I really like spending time in here and it's a really good commuter car. What makes it a good commuter car? Well, start with these seats. These are some leather seats that we have here with some additional red accenting, which matches the outside. And it's got some red stitching too. And it's got some perforations in here, which have got a cube design, which look interesting. And they are very comfortable. That red stitching continues to the doors, which also have some leather accenting and also some red sort of racy highlights, which are pretty fun to look at and make the interior just a bit more interesting. You've also got red stitching up here on the steering wheel itself and on the center armrest. Talking about that center armrest, very comfortable to rest your hand. It is adjustable front and back and it's a good place to store little bits and pieces because it is an additional place to lock items away. Starting from the top, you've got an eight inch 
full color display, which is easy to interact with. It's got a nice coating on it to prevent too many fingerprints going on here. And it's really designed for you just to plug in your phone and go. It doesn't have navigation in here. You do have simple controls for radio media and all those sorts of things. And you will have your reversing camera pop up here as well, but it is designed to connect your phone and go. Talking about connecting your phone, I have had some issues with the wireless Apple CarPlay. I've disconnected my phone heaps of times, done all the troubleshooting, still have it disconnect on me sometimes. So that is a little concerning, but overall it works really well when it is working. And moving down below, simple climate control vents. Yes, they feel like a washing machine, but they do work. And you've got a 12 volt socket and a USB socket down there as well. Now you've also got a cubby hole to put your phone, like perfectly sized for a phone. And you've also got some cup holders, which are very clever. They're almost like those Porsche ones that pop out of the dashboard. They swivel around to reveal little cup holders, but then you can just push them back and you'll get more center storage space there. Nicely designed shifter for the automatic shifter. This is a Ford Speed automatic. So you have a option to shift into a first, second and third if you really have to just squeeze all the power out. But I find it's a pretty good gearbox to use. And you have a manual handbrake and pretty simple instrument cluster at the front. You have a screen that will give you all the vital information, mainly just for that digital speedo and trip information. And that's really it. Stalk operation, there's nothing special there apart from having automatic headlamps, which are cool. And like I mentioned, you can control the side mirrors by just pressing in a button on the side, which is super easy, saves you having to walk out and ask your passenger to fold the mirrors back in, or so you don't forget when you're on the move. You do have cruise control and a speed limiter. And like I mentioned, you do have automatic braking just in case you run into a, a moment when you forget to brake and there's a car or obstacle in front of you or someone crosses out in the front. So it's well equipped in here, it's really comfortable, but the comfort sort of ends with the back seats a little because this is how I'm set up in my sitting position, but just check out what that looks like from the back. Okay, now this car does have four doors, but yeah, it's not the most comfortable car for long trips. I can fit okay here. My knees can move to the side of the seat. This is how I would normally be driving. But if I try and put my knees into the back of the seat, the front driver's gonna complain feeling my knees going to the back of them. But yeah, not, not much knee room at all. My feet are actually pretty comfortable. I have ample movement down the bottom. There's nothing constricting my feet movement, which is all right. And my headroom, yeah, it's a little bit restrictive. I'm 5'11", so back here it's okay, but if you're any taller than that, you're definitely gonna feel like you're being squeezed in here. Now, where you're gonna definitely be feeling like you're squeezed is if you've got this middle seat for long trips, because moving in here, yeah, uh, <laughs> middle seat's here for definitely smaller or younger individuals, not someone even of stature of 5'11", you can't fit in there very comfortably at all. But other than that, the leather is great. I love the leather. It makes everything a lot more nicer back here. You have good seat pockets and you've also got ISOFIX points for children's seats on both the outer seats, which makes it easy just for loading around smaller people. But yeah, in here, definitely not the most comfortable rear seats, but at least we have doors to get in and out of and it's not a three door. So it makes it really easy to get in and out of. Ugh. Now getting out of that tight back seat, let's jump onto the engine. So this engine is a 1.2 liter petrol, non-turbocharged, so it's a naturally aspirated four cylinder. It produces 62 kilowatts and 122 newton meters of torque. And look, there's an air cleaner. <laughs> this has a dual overhead cam and variable valve timing, which to us laymans, that just means it's not exactly basic, but compared to a turbocharged motor or hybrid motor, yeah, it's pretty basic. This one here is paired up to a four-speed automatic, as I've already mentioned. So let's just see how much power we can squeeze from the little four-cylinder. Okay, so we're driving the Kia Picanto. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this for a long time because I've always wondered how little power could you put in a car and still make it okay to drive? I mean, well, we're looking at it. This is 62 kilowatts right here. And how does it perform? Surprisingly well. Very well, actually. <laughs> This thing only weighs 1,010 kilograms and paired to this four-speed automatic, I thought I was in for an absolute snooze fest, but instead, what I've got is what feels like a Vespa that's got a roof, automatic wipers, automatic windows, autonomous emergency braking systems, wireless Apple CarPlay, and can fit five people in it. It is so fun to drive because 
of two reasons. One is the steering ratio. They've nailed it with the steering ratio because it's not too slow where you're going, uh, well, I've got to turn, turn, turn and cross my arms every time I go through a corner. But it's not too quick either where you feel like you've only got small amounts of movements and you know, it feels a bit weird, feels a bit like a race car. Instead, they've nailed it with this in-between flavor for people who are gonna be driving this around the cities and laneways of larger cities. Now I've loved my time with the Kia Picanto just because how easy it is to jump in and get going. I would definitely appreciate the addition of push button start and keyless exit and entry, but it's not entirely necessary. I get it for this price point of around 21 grand, but it would definitely add to the experience. It's so easy to turn on and get going. It's like the non-fuss car. It doesn't complain about anything. It just gets going. And when you hop in, you're greeted with nice leather seats, which are very comfortable. Leather steering wheel feels great. The door inserts for the leather are even better. Just everything's so nice and comfortable. Everything works. Like the, the simple climate controls. Yes, they are very basic and they look like a washing machine down here, but they work. That's all that matters. You got plenty of storage space for your phone and easy to access cup holder accessories down the bottom, which are really cool. And they look kind of fun to play with when you're bored in traffic. The shifter feels nice to engage with because it feels like an old school rounded knob on the top. And yeah, basic as it gets in here because it's all you need. It's really what I'm using it for and what I guess imagine a lot of people would use it for is just for that daily commuter or, you know, that second car or even your first car. This is a great option and I do think, I really do think it's top of the range in terms of against its competitors because it's just so damn usable. You've got five seats in here. You can legally put three adults in the back. You've got plenty of storage space and you can even fold down a seat and still carry four passengers in here. Turning, low center of gravity, grippy tires I might add. I think the tires that come with this from the factory are pretty decent for what most people are gonna be using it for. Tighter corners at higher speeds. No issues, no wheel chirping, no nothing. It doesn't complain, even with these 16 inch alloy wheels. Braking is seriously impressive just because of how light this thing is. And look, doesn't matter if someone's driving a Porsche next to you because they're gonna to have to stop and go in the same traffic. So you're sitting nice and upright. You got decent brakes, you got autonomous emergency braking up the front. Everything's really simple and easy to use. My main gripe is this center screen and connection to Apple CarPlay. I don't know what it is. I've tried disconnecting, tried reconnecting, tried doing everything in the book that Kia would have to offer in terms of resetting the actual system in here and resetting the Bluetooth connections and resetting my phone connections even. And I'm still having issues with wireless Apple CarPlay working. And I think that would really irk me if I just bought this because that means trips back to the dealer. I know for a fact that the dealer, if they don't know what's causing it, are just going to troubleshoot with you, which is something you just could do at home. If you're not as much as a technophile as someone, I guess like myself, like I'm big into tech and I hope I know what I'm doing or know how to at least find a solution. I was really struggling. So if I'm struggling, I couldn't even imagine like someone like my mother would be able to try and find a solution for this. And it just makes the car a little bit less of an experience to drive. It diminishes the actual experience of driving this thing because it's really a shame because that's where the maps are. You're only in your phone. There's no inbuilt navigation in here. It's a fun car to drive too. I think the automatic is just, just it's so easy. It's so easy. I mean, like the manual, sure, you get an extra speed, but unless you're doing highway speeds all the time, just get the auto because it's so comfortable and it just delivers on power and performance every time. There's no issues I've had with it. It hasn't been indecisive on gears. It's been very good. If I go to accelerate now, it makes a lot of noise, but it gets going on the drop of a dime. It's not waiting, there's no turbo lag. It's using that naturally aspirated motor to its full advantage. Turning circle's incredible. It goes at the end of laneways like nothing where other cars would have to reverse back down. Yeah, it's so good. I love it through corners especially. It is quite fun. I just wish there were more corners. It's something I've realized that there's not enough tight corners here in Sydney to absolutely exploit the car like a P Kia Picanto in the city, but it's not a car that you want to go out to the old, you know, out to some road where you can have a lot of fun in the corners because 
let's face it, it's not really a hot hatch, so it's not going to be fulfilling all your hot hatch desires. But what's good is that you can plant it off the line and the wheels don't chirp and cheer like some other cars because there's not enough torque there to really do that. And even if there was, it's fed on smoothly and, you know, it's very comfortable. So if you live in the inner city or need a second or third car even, and like I mentioned, first car, definitely check out a Kia Picanto. Put this at the top of your list and then compare everything to it because just everything that this features is so great. It's packaged really well, it's built well. It's, yes, it's got cheaper materials, but it's gonna get the job done fairly and <laughs> fairly well. And so that's been the Kia Picanto GT line. I think for 21 grand, it's hard to argue about anything else that's this well put together and this well thoughtfully designed. I really think this would make a great first car or if you're someone living in the inner city that needs a second car or this is your primary mode of transport, you'll absolutely be happy with this. Now, what are the small issues I have with it? Yes, the screen connectivity with my phone was a bit patchy. I hope that's something Kia can fix in the future or that's something that I need to fix with my phone. But trying multiple times to connect to it, yeah, it's a little bit patchy and a little bit frustrating when that cuts out completely. And if you're regularly carrying full-size adults in the rear or need to carry big items around, it's gonna feel a little bit cramped in the rear. But if it's just one or two of you or some small people in the back, this car is very ideal for inner city living. And if you have to take it on those little bit longer road trips, this is a car that can do it. So very comfortable, well thought out and pretty well built and look, seven year warranty it's hard to argue that as well so this is a pretty good package for 21 grand and where should you put that on your shopping list i think definitely at the top this is close to being class leading if not this is the class leader for the micro segment now make sure you subscribe or leave a like if you like the kia picanto or leave a comment if you have an alternative for a brand new car that isn't the Kia Picanto. I'd love to hear them. And that's been it. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Cameron. You've just watched a productreview.com.au in-depth look, and I'll see you in the next one.